when you do go through those process, there's a lot of cookbooks and manuals to success with a community garden. There's actually whole little booklets that people can use for going through the process. It's not really that complicated. Um, but you have to decide if you even want a community garden, and I'm hoping everyone in the design team wants one, because being an agriculture person, I want to see that. But it's really important to develop a garden plan, and if you want to go so far as thinking about what resources are we going to need for this garden and generating that in your design or developing a garden plan. Um, if you have a strong agriculture person in your group, you'll probably be doing that. Yes? I guess. Okay, so these are the things you're going to be looking at. Does the site have at least six hours? That's the minimum that we anticipate for any site. But 12, 12 is much better than six. And is there water available? No one likes to haul water. It's a nice idea, but it isn't very good for reality. Um, is the site big enough? Is it sort of flattish? And this is, oh, I misspelled that, but south slope is better for frost protection. For you engineers, you probably already know something like this, but whenever you have air moving, it's less likely to freeze. So actually, if you're on a slight south slope, you're going to have less problem with frost. I don't think you have any sloping here, do you? Mm -hmm. But it's nice to know. Okay, how close is the site to people so they can use it? And is it visible um, for vandalism? If it's visible, you're going to have lot less vandalism. Basically, the thing I was thinking about in terms of sustainable design is the concept of nutrients staying in the system. So it's just something to think about. Um, so you've got, you know, a productive garden. Um, the, other, the other thing in terms of design is just designing diversity into the, the system, which I'm happy to answer any questions about that. So basically what you've got is you're starting with soil, and that's where all of your nutrients, everything that's going to give life to the plants and then nutrients to you is coming from the soil. So, you know, from the soil, as you know, you, get, you end up getting, you know, literally tons and tons of produce, nutrients, biomass comes out of the soil in the garden, and you're harvesting it and taking it away. Um, tons. You're eating it or, you know, whatever it is. You're, you know, you're literally pulling tons. So one thing we sometimes also do in our piles is we incorporate fish bone meal from Bob Gregg and, and those folks at CIAG. We usually like to compost it. Sometimes we'll put it into the soil as an organic fertilizer, but we often put it into the compost. Um, not always, this year we didn't do that at all, but sometimes we do. Um, but mainly it's water, greenery. Um, we, we shape them into these big rectangular things just purely for practicality of getting as much bulk as we can in as small of a space as possible. So we do a lot of shaping. We usually try to get as many people as we can to come help on composting days. 